Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today we're going to go ahead and break down the first Q&A that we received regarding the Anvil Hurricane. Now we're expecting another one of these tomorrow, so make sure that you're staying tuned for a follow-up video on that then. So jumping into this, the most popular questions were regarding the turret, and if you're going to have control over it as the pilot like you do in something like the Super Hornet. The answer in general was yes, but you're going to end up needing to add a device into that turret in order to allow you to do um, targeting and avionics integration with your current systems to basically handle that additional input into your system. Them. This is actually going to be the approach for most of the turrets that we see going forward, and it's something that they're still working to balance for various ships, which is why we see some ships able to control them now, like the Super Hornet, and others that are not, like the Vanguard or the Cutlass. Now those were conscious decisions that they've ended up making at this point, um, so we'll just kind of need to see where it goes once the ship's actually released. Now they did go into a bit of detail regarding being able to use a flash fire mount to use a fixed weapon instead of the turret. And they said they're reviewing that, but their current direction is to try and balance out the options. Like giving you the ability to do that, but not allowing you to use a size 6, but they would consider something like two size 4s. I think that makes sense and would probably be something like I mentioned in the Should You Buy video. Something limited by pipes or cooling or power requirements. Basically something to ensure that we're not getting overkill in what this ship is really meant to do. Um, with that information under our belt, we know that the ship could be used effectively as a single person craft, but they still say that the ship is really designed to work more in conjunction with the pilot and the gunner, and that's when it's really going to shine. The lack of agility on this ship means that you could actually um, you know, easily end up with someone on your tail, or someone in another vector that would be really difficult for you to shake. So if you don't have someone that's able to really control that turret, you may end up being in trouble. That lets you focus on approaches and maneuvering while your gunner can really kind of start to lay down damage and keep people occupied. The gunner can also help with other things like monitoring radar and missile locks, so two are obviously better than one when it comes to system management. They did clarify that the ship is really more of a boom and zoom fighter with a relatively high top speed and lots of boost fuel, but lacking the agility necessary to truly dogfight. It almost really reads like a small Polaris in a way, designed to really rush in, deal its damage, rush out, and repeat the attack run. Now it is worth noting that they say that the ship is designed for aggressive boosts, not for long burns. So it's not going to be something that's going full bore for long periods of time. Now when compared to ships um, that, you know, that we know that we have today, like different fighters, they mentioned most of what we already know in their roles, like the Hornet being more of a brawler that's able to take and deal damage. The Gladius is able to really chase down their targets that are trying to flee. The Sabre is being stealthy in its approach. Uh, and the Buccaneer wants to deal damage and avoid taking any of its own. The Hurricane, on the other hand, picks the threat, engages, and tries to knock it out before it can really do anything to you. It's basically a small Alpha Strike ship. Now, while the ship isn't really meant to take on extended punishment, it does come with the, the option to eject for both the pilot and the gunner. As far as range is concerned, it is a mid-range ship capable of traveling to fights on its own using the quantum drive and jump engine, but it should be more along the lines of what we see with the Gladius than something we see like the Vanguard. Now, with big weapons, we're expecting some high power draw. Um, you know, so if you're using something other things like uh, or things other than ballistics, um, it's going to be challenging. And they tell us that by current standards, it is a relatively low class power plant on board. Though you do have the option to increase that to um, to be a little bit closer to the more recent fighters. Um, you could run energy weapons if you wanted to, but it's going to start making power management much more challenging with the stock power plant in place today. And that's a design decision because they really envision players using mostly ballistics on this ship. Though you could upgrade and swap over to energy weapons if you wanted to. But I think it sort of makes sense to stick with ballistics since they tend to do more damage. And you're not going to be able to stay out for long periods of time based on kind of the mid-range um, ability of it and the uh, lack of durability. You're probably going to need to fall back for repairs after extended fights anyways. So the limited amount of ammunition you're bringing to the fight is less of a problem. So that's our first Q&A. I think it shed some interesting light into this. Um, hopefully we get a little bit more information regarding a couple topics tomorrow, so I'll make sure to cover that soon. If you have questions on any of this, please get it in the comments. Otherwise, stay tuned for more coming your way soon. Have a wonderful day and take care.